Hey everybody, today we are going to be unboxing an injured garter snake. Sawyer from Nebraska reached out to us not too long ago saying that she had found a garter snake outside that had an injury to its tail and we're, we've actually been trying to look for another garter snake to use in programs or education because we recently lost our program garter snake Twiggy due to old age. They're kind of a shorter lived species unfortunately but we had Twiggy for a long time but after her passing we we're like we'd like to rescue a garter not take one from the wild and this was the perfect opportunity. So I don't know exactly the extent of the injuries of this garter but this might be kind of a rehabilitation type project for us. So let's look inside and see what we've got. I love the shape of the box that Sawyer chose by the way. Like very well marked, like she did a, she did a good job there. Although I've never seen a box of these dimensions used for reptiles before, but I mean it worked. We arrived on time. Oh my gosh, you got out of your bag. There's just a loose garter snake in there. <laughs> All right. Aw, hey buddy. Hi. Well, you were probably, oh my gosh, hello, hello. You probably used to be in that bag, but then, oh yeah, probably yep. just got out of that yep. hole. we need to tie that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <gasps> He's, oh, wow. He doesn't just have an injury to the tail. You're he missing has no tail. most of your tail. Um. Oh, buddy. Oh, you seem fine otherwise. Like, look at you. Your face looks clear. Your eyes look clear. Tongue flicks look good. You seem to be in good body condition, but let's take a look at... You've got, I guess, a couple of nicks and blemishes along your sides or along your belly. Let's look at your tail. Oh, my gosh. What's that sticking out? Are those his vertebrae sticking out? Oh... They totally are. I mean, it's past the vent, yeah, which is good. that is true. So you can see the vent right, right here, and then we've got the tail there. So, oh, if this is a male. Those hemipenes aren't feeling too good right now, I bet. Yeah, if he even still has them. Yeah, you might not have them. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wonder what attacked you. So normally we would say let nature take its course and to release him back into the wild so that he could either survive or get eaten by a predator, which is nature. But since we were looking for a new garter snake to use in programs anyway or to use in education, we thought, well, this one we can take in because then it's one less garter that we would need to be looking for elsewhere. So it was kind of a win-win situation. But I think the first thing we're going to have to do is give him a betadine soak. What do you think? Probably. All right, let's get you in betadine. All right, we have some roughly 80 degree water in here. We're gonna add some betadine or betadine until it looks like tea. I'm gonna mix it up. Yeah, that's turning brown. You can actually use pure betadine to like help flush a wound or clean a wound. But if you're using a bath, you don't wanna use pure betadine for a bath. So I use diluted betadine. The challenge is gonna be putting you in here though. Hey buddy. Yeah, we just need that tail tip to soak really, but. Are you going to sit still like this for 10 minutes? I mean, maybe you will. Maybe I don't need a lid on you. But you know what? It'd probably be good nope. to rehydrate you anyway. So <laughs> here we go, buddy. I know. I know. We're going to go in here. Maybe this wasn't the best container choice. You mean the Applebee's container wasn't amazing for this? <laughs> well, I figured this was good because there's ventilation holes yeah, right here. Yeah, true. All right, dude. We'll let you soak for a little bit. I know you don't like it, but it's good for you. All right. It has been about 20 minutes. So I'd say you're beta dying the bath is done. Hi, how was your bath? Did you get all cleaned out? Oh, you look very clean. Look at you. Man, that tail though. It's just amazing how resilient reptiles really are. Because this is like the equivalent, in my opinion, to if an entire limb of a mammal got ripped off by a predator. Because, I mean, they need their tail for the counterbalance as they slither, just like geckos need their ta tail for it. But here he is, like, he doesn't seem to even realize that he is missing his tail. He is behaving totally fine otherwise. I know there's been studies that speculate that reptiles don't perceive pain the same way mammals do. Like, they don't perceive as much of it, or nearly as much, really. But that's still gotta hurt. So we're going to give him regular baths, hopefully get him eating for us, set him up in a quarantine enclosure, and since most of our reptiles are at the facility now, our house works perfectly for a quarantine uh, environment, and we'll keep it posted. All right, we've had this little guy for a couple of weeks now, a few weeks now actually, and he just had his first shed with us, and he looks so pretty. We don't have a name for him yet, but look at his tail after this shed. That looks so much 
better. You don't see his vertebrae sticking out anymore. And he's a very good eater. He's eating everything we feed him. And he's actually not too bad for handling either, for being a wild-caught snake. Yeah. But, yeah, he's doing really well, actually. So I could totally see him making it just fine and eventually being introduced to our other snakes, maybe being on display in our zoo. But uh, this video isn't done yet. We're going to continue taking care of him and give you another update whenever there is one. All right, it is way overdue for an update. We've actually had this little dude for about, or girl, I don't really know yet, for about four months, and she is out of quarantine. And, I mean, she's still in a quarantine cage because I'm trying to figure out what to do with her, but she's in our vision cage. It works really well for cleanliness. I'm able to, like, clean it out really well and disinfect in between new animals. So this is our quarantine cage at home. We had our blue tongue skink in here most recently, or before the garters. But now it's for garters, since the blue tongue has moved to the facility, and we have a rescue garter snake in here that was given to us by somebody who didn't want it anymore. More. We have a red-sided garter in here somewhere that had the same story. And then we have our tailless garter snake who is showing off. And this is the most outgoing garter snake I think I've ever seen. Come here. Come here. You are so active. You explore hand. Okay, I kind of had to makeshift a stand here for my camera because I don't have the actual stand at home right now to hold it, so hopefully it doesn't fall. Anyway, this is our little tailless garter snake, and like I was saying, he or she is so active and so bold. Like, I've never had a snake that explored every inch of the cage like he does right away and, you know, doesn't hide at first, but from day one, this guy was moving around. And take a look at his tail! Look at that! It looks so much better! It's healing up so so well, I can't believe it. Like, it just looks like the, the end of a tail now. He poops fine, he definitely musks just fine, and there aren't any bones sticking out anymore. Ugh, dude, you must all over me. Why? Why? That definitely still works. Oh my gosh, you reek. Here's the underside of the tail, and I am on the fence on whether this is a male or a female, because that is a pretty thick tail right after the cloaca there. But based on the size of the snake, I'm like, well, oh, that's a, typically a girl size with how big she is. But that looks like it could be hemipenes. So poor dude, if, jeez, the predator bit off the tip of the hemipenes. Oh my gosh. But anyway, you don't see any bones or vertebrae sticking out anymore. It has almost completely healed over, which is amazing. And fortunately, but unfortunately, she still musks very, very well. And I smell so bad right now. But that's all right. You can do whatever you feel like, girl. You went through some serious trauma there. And let's see if you'll eat. Something else that's really cool about her personality is she has a huge appetite. She ate, like, the first day or the day after we got her. And it would not surprise me if she started eating worms right here on camera. Hey, want to check that out? You love worms and fish and pinky mice and everything that comes near your face. But it looks like we don't want to eat right now. Nope. Still doesn't want to eat. That's okay. I've never hand fed her before. I thought maybe she'd do it on camera because of how ravenous she is, but if she doesn't want to, that's okay. But anyway, I think it'd be really cool to see what she looks like on the inside, or rather what her tail looks like on the inside, and just see how that bone structure was affected by the uh, predation and how she's healing up as a result. So we're going to go get her a radiograph or x-ray. All right, we got the radiograph done and had some interesting results actually. Down here at the posterior or tail end of his body, you can see the last vertebrae he has. I mean, you can obviously see his blunt tail here where the rest was chewed off by that predator, but the last vertebrae he does have is showing a lot of calcification. That's why you see a lot more white down around that last bone. So that's how his tail healed up. It looks like it's healed up great, actually. We have no bones exposed anymore. So he must have kind of healed around the bones he, or the vertebrae he still had. And it looks like he's, he's good to go. Oh, his tail is looking great, all things considered. But something that I noticed and found pretty interesting is if you go north a bit or towards his anterior or head end, you'll see that if you look close, he has a couple of fractured ribs. So these broken ribs are probably a result of that same traumatic event from whatever predator he encountered. However, snakes encounter broken ribs in the wild more often than you'd think, and they always seem to heal just fine with them on their own. So I think now that his quarantine is done, his tail has healed, his rib bones will heal over time, we're going to put him in his new forever enclosure. 
All right, buddy, we are at the Snake Discovery Zoo. There's Rex over there staring at us, trying to figure out what we're doing. I have yet to figure out whether this is a male or a female. I think based on how thick that tail is right after the cloaca, and it looks like it would continue being that thickness for a little while, I think you're a boy. Although, again, I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to put you in our epic garter snake tank with all of the other plains garter snakes, just like you are. Head on in, go check it out. Oh, are you going to make a friend right away? Oh, who is that? Whoa, a new friend. Oh, that's one of our common garter snakes there. We have two species here together because they both exist here in Minnesota. So we actually have a tag that explains the differences between the commons and the plains. And he is now going to be the newest plains garter snake in the exhibit. Buddy, what do you think? Oh, you've got a rock there to explore. Man, I just love his golden stripe or his dorsal stripe there. Look, he's already checking out the cork bark. Oh, and there's that stubby little tail. Oh, buddy. Where are you gonna go? You have all sorts of places to explore. You can check out your plants. You've got cork way up there and ledges and branches. You have, I'll zoom out a little bit here. We've got other ledges and plants over here. Yeah, I think he's really going to like this. Plus you get to meet new friends like this little garter snake and that big garter snake and this little garter snake. Yeah, you get to make so many new friends. Where'd you go? Oh, you're over there. All right, we're gonna give him a couple days in here and then check in on him and see how he's doing. Well, it's been a couple of days, so let's see how our little nub-tailed garter is doing. Are you making friends? Where are you first off? Okay, we have the garter over there. There's one over here. Oh, there's our flame. I don't think you've met him before. He's really pretty. Are you back here? Oh, there you are. Oh, you made friends with our Eurythristic and it uh, looks like a couple of the common garters. Come here, let's see how you're doing. Oh, never mind. That's a full tail. That's not you. Where is our nub tail? Oh, you're friends with the flame. I think that's you. Let's see. Come on, nub tail. Are you back here? Oh, there you are. Oh, you made a bunch of friends. Oh, come here. Let's see how you're doing. Aw, you're looking great. You look really happy. It looks like he's already fitting in and behaving like normal. He's not scared at all, it doesn't seem. He's just trying to get away from me. That's so cool. Well, there he goes. Looks like he's gonna hide under that cork bark over there. Thank you guys so much for watching his little journey here. We will have the nub-tailed garter snake in our garter snake exhibit in the zoo. So if you come and visit, you'll have to try to find him, see if you can locate him among all the other garter snakes in here. We do need a name for him though. Let's take one more look at you now that I know where you are. What are we going to name you? Maybe the viewers can help us decide. Oh, you're just buddies with everybody now. There he goes again. All right, still trying to figure out his way around, but he seems really happy in here, so that's pretty cool. All right, thank you again for watching. Thank you, as always, to our amazing Patreon backers for your very generous support. Give me name suggestions in the comments below for this little dude, and we'll see you next time.